On today's video, we're talking about why you should consider being a field service engineer. Before we get into the why, I think it would be important to give you guys my background. Before I started working for the company that I'm working for now, which is a biomedical technology company, uh, I was in the Navy. I spent six years as a fire controlman uh, working on an aircraft carrier. I worked on ship self-defense system as well as uh, cooperative engagement capabilities. Uh, while I was in the Navy, I worked on systems that required a lot of troubleshooting, some installation, and just a lot of upkeep as far as the technical aspect of the job goes. Now, the significance of this is that it translates extremely well for being a field service engineer. So if you're someone like me, you're a veteran, just recently got out, and you're interested in being a field service engineer, looking for reasons why, this video is for you. And actually, even if you're not a veteran, let's say you have no naval service whatsoever, military service whatsoever, that's fine too. You might find a lot of this information useful to you because some of the skills that I had as a veteran, you might have as well. strive for greatness through optimization first time here welcome i hope you enjoy this useful information and if you do gently tap that like button subscribe and consider sharing with someone else that might find this useful if you're already a subscriber thank you for coming back to the channel now let's get into the video the first thing i'm going to talk about is when you work or your working hours Though I may be on the customer site from those time ranges, I usually will reach out, schedule a time that I'd like to come in, and then upon confirmation, I'll go on site at that scheduled time, complete my work, and depending on how much time I have for the day, I'll use that time as home day. Now, what that means is I'm using that time to complete admin required work or catch up on other types of maintenance or repairs that need to be done. Now, this is kind of important to me. Well. This is actually really important to me because I don't work from nine to five. I've never been that kind of person. Even throughout my off hours, I'm still actively working on something. The benefit of this is I'm not necessarily constrained to only being able to complete my work from those time schedules. Today's literally Saturday, about an hour ago before starting this video, I completed an IQOQ. So that's something that I have flexibility with being a field service engineer. Now, as a veteran going on deployments, you might work day shift, you might work mids. So you're working all sorts of different hours. Coming to a civilian world where let's say you might still be a night person or an afternoon person, that's fine. You schedule your appointments in the afternoon. That way you have your morning time to do whatever you need to. As long as your work is being completed and you're meeting expectations, you should be fine. Now, keep in mind, this may be different for every company. Now, I previously mentioned working from home. This can be a double-edged sword. By this, I mean if you're easily distracted by being home, this might not be best for you. For me, it's a benefit because I'm somewhere I want to be. I can actually focus and control my environment and it allows me to be extremely productive. The next benefit I'm going to talk about is the travel aspect of the job. Being a Navy veteran, being on a few deployments, travel and just being away from home is no mystery for me. Now, the difference is, in this way, it's a good thing. As a field service engineer, your travel schedule can vary from just being local to having to fly to other cities near your region. For me, travel-wise, I travel around Houston as well as some other uh, cities within my region. Occasionally, I do have to go further north up to Toronto as well as Boston. Training-wise, it's being held in Auburn, California, so there is some West Coast travel occasionally. Now, the benefit of this is, as a field service engineer, if you're going to be using your own vehicle, you might get some kind of uh, monthly stipend that goes towards your expenses. Uh, for me, I have my travel expense covered for gas. If I do fly out of Houston, my flights are usually covered as well as anything that comes with travel. So that means my food, my hotel, 
and my rental car. Good thing about this is I get to keep all those points at the end of the day. Now, if that's not enough, if you're in other cities while you're on the job and time permits, uh, make sure you're good with your scheduling. You're able to enjoy going out into the city and seeing that city for what it really is. But like I said, travel can be good or it can be bad. But at the end of the day, it's what you make of it. While we're on the topic of time, uh, I have started uploading more shorter video, short form content. So if you guys are interested in short form content, which are usually about a minute, nothing more than a minute, make sure you subscribe to this channel for shorts as well. Uh, if you're on Instagram, you can follow me there at trapmaster underscore John. I post more on Instagram, so you're more likely to stay up to date on that platform versus here on YouTube. Last but not least, this isn't your typical routine job. Although you have a routine that you might uh, create, might try to stick to, just like in the military, uh, being a veteran, stuff always pops up. You have random things that pop up like repairs or just things out of the blue. So when it comes to this job, no day is going to be the same, even though you might still plan some things about it. Depending on how well you're able to pick up uh, what you're learning, you're going to work on multiple different pieces of equipment. Now, I'm kind of a very outgoing person. I want to learn. Learning is my objective. Um, so I want to learn as much as I can. If you're someone that's like me, this is going to be a great career for you. You're Based on your skill set, you're going to be able to progress and work on more complicated pieces of equipment. Now, short term, you're probably going to be a little bit hesitant. You're going to be a little bit nervous. But if you think about it in the long term, the skill set that you're going to learn it's going to be extremely valuable. Now, the reason why this is important is you want to stay ahead of the competition. Being a veteran, I came in as an E3, got out as an E6. I wanted to get as far as I could within the short amount of time that I was in. Now, I apply that same logic when it comes to corporate America or just being a field service engineer in general. Now, if you made it this far, thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy day for watching this whole video. I ask that you do one little favor before you decide to leave. YouTube's going to suggest this video to you, so if you're interested in learning more, seeing what this channel is about, click that video. If you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button, tap the like button, and share this video with someone else that might find it useful. With that said, I'll catch you on the next one. Thank mm -hmm. you.